Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to uh, introduce our recent work on detecting wireless spy cameras uh, via steel meeting and probing. This is a joint work with Tian Liu, Chen Tan, and uh, Professor Rui Tan, and my advisor, Professor Jun Huang. In recent years, we have seen an explosive growth uh, of various video cameras. Along with this is people's increasing concerns about privacy. In particular, Whereas video cameras are easy to obtain because, uh, from uh, online retailers, easy to deploy because they don't require cables for network connectivity. And what's more, they are difficult to detect because they are easily uh, be miniatured or disguised, which makes them ideal spy tools. So for example, these four pictures show uh, four spy cameras we bought from uh, online retailers. Uh, and the circle shows the position of the camera lens. Uh, their prices are all below $130. Uh, it's never been easier today to spy on uh, someone's private space. We see a lot of stories uh, from uh, online news or newspapers that people find spy cameras in base rooms, bedrooms, uh, Airbnb's. Uh, and so on. It is reasonable to believe that there's even more uh, undiscovered cases. To address these issues, lodging of offers like Airbnb requires hosts to disclose or prohibit uh, the use of, of surveillance devices. However, Airbnb provides no assurance that such requirement will be obeyed. Despite the increasing privacy concerns, detecting wireless camera uh, remains a challenging task. Conventional flash-based detector first illuminate a space and then ask a user to search for the camera glint uh, to detect the camera. Uh, this usually involves a painful sweep while providing no assurance of detection. Finally, whether the camera can be detected or not depends on user's visual equity. equity. Uh, so if you cannot recognize the letters in the last line of this table, you may, not, should not, uh, you may should not use this kind of detector. On the other hand, traffic analysis tools identify video streams based on traffic classification. However, due to the ubiquitous existence of video streams like uh, smart TV, video chatting, or legal surveillance uh, devices uh, deploying in your neighborhood, those methods have a high false alarm rate. For example, they may wrongly detect your neighbor's smart TV as a spy camera. Uh, our goal in this work is to detect, uh, to develop a practical and accurate systems uh, to detect off-the-shelf wireless cameras. By practical, we mean our system should be simple to use and minimize user intervention. Uh, intervention. Uh, and by accurate, we mean that the system should have a high detection rate while uh, maintaining low false alarm rate. Uh, in particular, it needs to go beyond traffic analysis uh, and detect wireless camera only if that this camera is spying on your private space. It worth noting that our goal is not a, an oracle system which can detect all kinds of wireless cameras. Instead, we focus on detecting off-the-shelf wireless cameras because they're so prevalent. Although the attacker may use specifically uh, engineered cameras to bypass our detectors. It means uh, the significant, uh, the technical and the economical bar of such uh, uh, wireless camera will be much higher. Uh, to achieve this goal, we leverage an important property of off-the-shelf wireless camera, uh, which is they obey standard wireless networking and video coding standards. Uh, to date, motion composition-based comp uh, compression has been the de facto standard for wireless, uh, wireless video uh, streaming. The stream of pictures uh, under this kind of compression algorithms are divided into a group of pictures, or GOPs. One uh, group of picture contain one uh, Y picture and multiple P and B pictures, where P I pictures uh, encode a complete scene and P and B pictures only encode scene differences. And this uh, method is highly bandwidth efficient, so uh, that is why it is the de facto standard. Uh, 
Well, off-the-shelf wireless cameras typically support two uh, kinds of streaming modes. Uh, the first one is live streaming mode, where pictures are transferred immediately up, uh, after the capture. In progressive downloading mode, on the other hand, uh, the video is first stored locally and then tra transferred upon request. Uh, during downloading, the video is transferred block by block. The block size is determined by the available memory space at the video player software uh, and is uh, typically 20 to 30 seconds long. So our, our key idea here is to exploit the property of this video compression standard. First, we ask the user to stimulate wireless video cameras by changing the light conditions uh, under her private space. Then the stimulus will cause a change of the, on the scene, and as a response during video coding, the sizes of P and B pictures will increase. Because of traffic encryption, it is impossible to inspect the uh, picture data directly. So therefore, the uh, detector has to estimate the bit rate of a packet flow to infer the variation of picture size. Uh, fortunately, as shown in this picture figure, the bit rate will vary sig significantly under stimulus, uh, causing a responsive pattern that can be measured by sniffing its traffic. However, realizing this idea is not easy because of many practical challenges. In particular, bit rate measurements can be polluted by network variations such as packet jitters. For example, this figure shows the picture sizes, packet jitters, and bit rates measured for a, a live video stream. During measurements, the video scene remains stable. However, due to the network contentions, we observe a burst of jitters, such that the packet intervals are randomly dispersed or squeezed. As a result, bit rate measurements vary significantly, which will mislead the detector. So in the field following, I will discuss how to address this challenge. I will introduce two systems. The first one is called Blink, which is a light, lightweight app that uses the light sensors and video radios, uh, wireless radios of mobile devices to detect live, live streaming wireless cameras. Most embedded and miniature uh, wireless spike, spike cameras work in this more mode because they don't have a local storage. Blink works in four stage. Uh, the first one is training. Oh, sorry. Uh, the first one is training. In the training phase, it asks. Uh, in the training phase, it sniffs and profiles packet flows under consistent light conditions. While in the stimulating phase, it asks the users to uh, turn on off the light to provide light stimuli. In the setting phase, it identifies the time instant of stimulus, and lastly, in the probing phase, uh, it investigates the irresponsive rate patterns. Next, I will focus on training and probing. Uh, in the training phase, first, uh, no, uh, before the training phase, the Blink device wireless traffic into packet flows based on the sender and the receiver mic address. Uh, these addresses are included in the MAC header, which is encryption free. Well, during training, Blink use FFT to measure the period of a packet flow and then divide bit, bit rate measurement into blocks. To learn the periodic structure of the flow, Blink folds the blocks, computes statistics of bit rates at different phases. So if the flow is produced by a, by a video camera, Blink will learn the internal structure of its GOP. As shown in the obtained profile, the periodic transformation of eye picture yields the highest peak in the profile. While we can also observe the, the lower peak respond, uh, corresponding to the P and B pictures. <laughs> During probing, Blink investigates whether a packet flow has responsive rate, rate patterns. To do this, it performs phase coherent t tests to characterize the, the difference between the observed bit, bit rates and the profiled rate pattern. The t-test first calculate a t-score, and then we map the t-score into a probability value by looking up the table of t-distribution. We can compare the probability value against the threshold under a given confidence level to determine the detection result. And moreover, we can combine the uh, results from multiple rounds to improve detection robustness. Uh, this is achieved by using Fisher's test. 
uh, which uses multiple p-values to calculate the score uh, rather than evaluating a single p-value with a given threshold. And this score follows the chi square distribution. And by looking up the table of this distribution, we can obtain a combined p-value and determine the detection result. And in practice, we found that this, pro uh, this problem algorithm is very sensitive to jitters. So, uh, for example, in the right figure, we calculated the t-score, uh, and it's very noisy. There are a large number of peaks, even when the light is uh, relatively uh, stable. We found that this is mainly caused by the eye pictures. First, eye pictures don't uh, first, we know that apertures don't respond to stimuli, and moreover, because apertures are much larger than P and B pictures, so their transmissions will cause a large misleading T score. Uh, every uh, any time shift on its tr uh, transmission will cause a large misleading T score. To address this issue, we use a filter to remove ice pictures uh, by first clustering packets and then eliminate the largest cluster of each period. And this figure shows the effect of the piece score, uh, pic, uh, eye picture filter. <laughs> Next, we will introduce the system Flickr, which uh, can further argument blink. Flickr is a robust and automated detector. It embraces error resistance in design and requires no user intervention. In addition, it can detect wireless cameras in progressive downloading mode where uh, to achieve this, we need, we need to stimulate the video's uh, vlogs instead of pictures. In addition, because the uh, camera will not re respond in real time, Flickr needs to yield self-identifiable responding patterns. The stimulator of Flickr leverage human invisible flickering. Uh, it employs a portable circuit to harness daily used LED. To introduce flickering, it switches LED power supply at a very high frequency. Uh, for example, in this figure, uh, the simulator is integrated with a commodity LED, and the Raspberry Pi uh, controls the circuit to regulate flicker frequency. Well, this figure shows the effect of flickering on two consecutive pictures captured by the camera. The rightmost picture is the pixel difference between two consecutive pictures. You can see that when there's no flicker, the two consecutive pictures are almost the same. Well, in comparison, when flickering is on, even the two pictures seem the same. Uh, with bare eyes, there's a large number of different pixels uh, in this third picture. Uh, therefore, the video camera will use more bits in coding, which will result in a responsive rate pattern. To yield a, a, a self-identifiable responsive pattern, uh, Flickr embeds an identification code by modulating the picture sizes of video stream. Signific uh, specifically, it represents different bits with different Flickr frequencies, uh, which results in different responsive patterns. This figure shows an example of the code embedding where we can clearly observe a bit sequence uh, in both the traces of picture sizes and rate measurements. The, to embrace uh, error, error resistance, uh, Flickr further protects the embedded code with error correcting code. And to make the stimulus effective against uh, both live streaming and progressive downloading mode uh, of spy cameras, Flickr employs, employs a two-layer code embedding scheme. Well, the first layer is used for detecting the live streaming videos, where each bit only lasts for a short period of two seconds. Uh, and the second layer is used for detecting progressive downloading mode videos. Well, each layer two bit uh, for, lasts for a lot, much longer period to stimulate large video blocks. Uh, at layer two, bit zero co correspond to a no stimulus period, while uh, bit one contains multiple layer one bits. As we mentioned before, during uh, progressive downloading, 
a video block typically lasts for 20 to 30 seconds. So we send a uh, layer two bit period to one minute, uh, such that each bit one at layer two contains 30 layer one bits. To prop a packet flow, uh, Flickr decodes it uh, bit rate variation and search for the identification code. Under strong network variations, code may loss, and we may have false alarms where a uh, rate variation of a non-spike video camera just coincidentally matches the identification code. To address these issues, we develop a detector, statistical de detector to compute a p-score based on probabilistic models. And it First, it computes the probability of first alarm according to the length of identification code, and this estimates a probability value based on the number of received identification code. Uh, lastly, we evaluated the performance of building and flicker in four different rooms of different ambient light and network conditions. The figure on the left shows the detection rate of, uh, of blink. Well, the red picture shows the uh, false alarm rate for the blink. You can see that uh, at, uh, after a single round of uh, stimulus, the detection rate is around 30% to 55%, while the rate increases quickly uh, after then and reaches above 90% above, uh, after five rounds. And the red figure, you can see that after seven rounds of stimuli, the false alarm rate drops to below 1%. And as for the flicker, uh, the left figure shows the receiving rates of identification code or be revealed as a single round uh, test in the uh, right figure. And the red figure shows the probability value calculated based on the number of received identification code. <laughs> and we can see the value increases to more over 97%. Uh, after only three rounds. To conclude, we propose a stimulate and uh, prop approach to detect off-the-shelf wireless video cameras. And following this approach, we developed two practical systems named Blink and Flickr, which can accurately detect uh, wireless video cameras in different streaming modes and under network variations. In the future, we would like to further explore the implication of this approach to other privacy intrusive sensors uh, like hidden microphones and Trojan horses that secretly lock users' private data. Uh, thanks, you. And uh, now I would like to take your question. <laughs>